Man, it's really been a while since I've done one of these, huh? I think it'd be best to restart from scratch because... <laughs> yeah. And now I even have these cool animated host segments. Definitely not ripping off a cooler, more popular show. Anyways, I think it's time. Time for my grand return. Sup, fuckers! What the fuck? What? Did you really think you could run from me, especially after not uploading that tearless video you said you would? I mean, fair enough, I guess. So, do you want to, like, co-host this with me or something? Uh, oh, sure? I didn't think I'd get this far, honestly. Good for you. Anyways, be nice to the viewers. Let's get on with the show. Fiction has given us a plethora of powers that we humans can only dream of using. Awesome things like pyrokinesis, cryokinesis, and even reality warping. But today's combatants are focused on one thing and one thing only, the mind. Because psychic powers are awesome and cool and epic! And they've mastered the art of their psychic power, despite both being teenagers. Man, why couldn't we get awesome powers like these two? NES, Nintendo's PSI powerhouse. And Silver, Sega's psychokinetic hedgehog. I'm Sun. Omega is dead. And I'm Sun. Nice to meet you. And it's our job to look into these characters' power and history to solve this debate. Who would win in a show of fictional fury? The year is 1990X. You'd probably think it's a time behind ours, considering the 1990. But no, it's totally the future. I mean, look at all these weird glowing cities. Whoa. Who really cares though? It's a 90s video game. Anyways, our focus today is a small little town called Onet. Yep, seems like a nice place for some random kid to begin his epic JRPG adventure that ends in attacking and dethroning God, all with little to no adult supervision. That's surprisingly accurate. <laughs> I know. Well, our random kid in question is Ness. Hey, look, it's it. Ness was just like any other kid living his normal life. And, of course, he lives here in Onet, which is located in a land named Eagle Land. Yeah! I don't know, bro. This Eagle Land seems kind of sus to me. I mean, you've got creepy old dudes trying to take your photo every 10 minutes. These weird little things. Saturns. Yeah, whatever you say. And wait, wait what? Yeah, no wonder it's called Eagle Land. Huh. And don't forget about Tessie! <laughs> oh my god, is that monkey using bubblegum to fly? <clears throat> As I was explaining before we got sidetracked, Ness was your average teen. Until one day, everything changed. A meteor came crashing down into a small town, as meteors do. And Ness, along with his friend Porky, went to go check out the crash site, as kids definitely do, and not run, or panic, or scream in terror of the destruction of the surrounding area. Which is irrelevant here, since no area was destroyed at all, because video games. They also went in search of Porky's brother too, but that's not really important. Hmm. This Porky kid gives off bad vibes. My asshole detection senses are going off. Yeah, Porky's kind of a douche, and a complete coward. Mood! Either way, though, at the side of the crash, they met this strange little alien from the future named Buzz Buzz. Aww, what a baby. Buzz Buzz came with a message, warning them of the cosmic-scale tyrant known as Gygus. Gygus planned to shroud the universe in infinite darkness, which Buzz Buzz would rather avoid happening. So he informed Ness of a tale of four chosen heroes, each being destined to collect all of the eight melodies and bring Gygus' plans to a halt. And then he met his end at the ruthless hands of Porky's mom. I knew these guys were trouble. Rest in peace, little man. In any case, Ness sets off on his quest. And get some cool friends too, which are the other chosen heroes. Paula, and Jeff, yeah. and Pooh. <laughs> That's a funny name. And with their power combined, Gygus was eventually stopped. However, Ness would not be able to accomplish this without some tools for the job. 
Ness is the standard things you'd expect someone his age to have, such as baseball bats, which increases both his guts and offensive power. And he also wields a yo-yo. Yeah, a yo-yo. And Ness makes it work too, as he's highly skilled at throwing it around and whacking people with it. It further increases his strength when equipped and has around an 80% accuracy rate. It's kind of whack, bro. Say that to his face and the one who will be whacked is you. Well, considering the fact that he has all these melee tools, it makes sense he's fairly skilled in face-to-face -face combat, right? Correct. But if he's fighting someone who likes to keep their distance, he also wears his Franklin badge, which deflects all lightning-based projectiles. Or he can just whack all of the projectiles away with a good baseball bat swing. But Ness isn't here because of his funny tools. The area where he excels in most is his incredible usage of his PSI, or psionics if you want to be technical. Or alternatively, his PK abilities or psychokinesis. PSI abilities come in many different variants, in order of weakest to strongest being Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Sigma, and finally Omega. <laughs> Omega. Anyways, there's plenty of cool things Ness has to do with his powers. With PSI life up, he can either heal himself or his allies, and the Gamma variation restores his health completely. He can put enemies to sleep with hypnosis, make them numb or paralyzed with paralysis, cure status conditions with healing, and make a barrier that cuts damage taken in half while reflecting it back with PSI shield. And on a reverse card! Yeah, it pretty much may as well be a reverse card. In his original game, Ness played more of a support role, as if all the healing and status PSI didn't take you off already. But however, that doesn't mean he didn't have any devastating attacks, his most deadly being PSI Rockin. Well, technically, it's not really called Rockin, as in the original game, the move was named after whatever you answered as your favorite thing before the game starts. So, technically, you could call it PSI Cooch. Spear Cooch. No, 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 no. Never say that again! Yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> as I was saying, the PSI Rockin releases a huge psychokinetic wave as his opponents, dealing massive damage, and with some pretty cool psychedelic imagery too. Huh, neat. But by far one of his strongest abilities is PSI Flash. There's a chance that it can make you numb, start feeling strange, or just sob uncontrollably. On top of that, it has a small chance of one-shotting the opponent. I see. Jesus, what can that move not do? However, if you thought that's all Ness had, then stop thinking because you're wrong. What do you mean? Well, technically Ness has more. I mean, look at Smash. But aren't those powers ones he can't learn in the game? Yeah, but it gives him a wider arsenal and gives us a more interesting fight. So, it's whatever. I suppose that's fair enough. Well, if we're doing that, then they should retain their Smash properties as well. Starting off with the most infamous, PK Fire. Supposedly taught to him by Paula, PK Fire shoots out a funny little bolt of lightning which ignites in a pillar of flames upon contact. As well as being the move most Wi-Fi Nesses spam all the time, it traps the unlucky victim in that pillar of flame. Why wouldn't they spam it? Can't lose if your enemy is trapped in flames. Yeah, but it's annoying. PK Thunder was also most likely taught to him by Paula. It allows Ness to control a ball of lightning and send it in whatever direction he pleases. And if he wants, he can redirect it into himself and launch himself forward to give his enemy a mean lightning charged headbutt. PK Magnet is a small shield that absorbs any and all energy based projectiles, which can also heal Ness when absorbed into the shield. Finally, there's PSI Starstorm. Taught to him by Pooh, Ness can call down a huge storm of falling meteors to rain down on the arena, which deals massive damage if it connects. Are we done yet? Yep, and that's all of his powers wrapped up. Finally! But had it not been for those powers, Ness wouldn't have been able to accomplish nearly as much as he's done. Ness is capable of taking down huge monsters, such as dinosaurs or even a volcano-sized kraken. And he's capable of beating a dog made of entirely diamond, and none of these even require his PSI. He should also be on equal footing with the rest of the Chosen Four. The Chosen Four are able to take on foes such as Thunder and Storm, both capable of creating storms in their fights. The force it takes to create a thunderstorm is around 209 megatons of TNT, just depending on the size of the storm. He is also one of the biggest tanks in Earthbound, being able to tank a blast from a nuclear reactor robot, but all this pales in comparison to later things he's done. After obtaining all eight melodies, he was able to create the realm known as Magicant in his own head. This doesn't sound like much, but objects can be taken in and out of Magicant, meaning they must have mass. And, by going by the original text, Magicant was stated to be an entire universe. And after defeating Ness's nightmare, the manifestation of evil in his own mind, Ness was able to touch the truth of the universe. Um, 
Tiny brain moment. Basically, the truth of the universe is described as being both time and space itself. By touching it, it caused Ness's consciousness to overlap with the entire universe, basically making him omnipresent. Damn, I wish. And he also absorbed the realm's power, which granted him a massive stat boost, which likely should put him around universal levels of power and durability. You'd hope it would give him that much power, otherwise he wouldn't have been able to aid in the defeat of Gygus and tank blows from his final form as well. However, as insane as Ness's power is, he still has those small few weaknesses. Like the fact that he can get homesick, which cripples him in battle. Ness is also vulnerable to status ailments like paralysis and hypnosis. And, speaking of those PSI things, his own PSI runs on a limited supply of PP, meaning it isn't unlimited. Man, why couldn't they put that in Smash? And on top of all that, he's still just a teenager, meaning he isn't exactly the best strategist in battle, and he doesn't have any real formal combat training either. But despite all this, with the help of his friends, this kid will never back down from his destiny. Let me ask you a question. What's up? What do you think of when you think of the future? Uh, stuff like flying cars or teleporters or the apocalypse, most likely. <laughs> well, in the case of that last one, you're actually correct. In this universe, 200 years into the future, the world is ravaged by the sun god Iblis, no affiliation. Destruction and terror as far as the eye can see. I see. Is this really what's gonna happen? Well, with the way 2020 has gone so far, it wouldn't be too out of place. Yeah, fair enough. But what the hell is any of this supposed to mean? Why did it have to be like this? Is there any hope left for the future? Actually, yes, in the form of a three-foot-tall psychic hedgehog. His name, Silver. Hey, I'm finally taller than something! For once. Now, before we go any further, let's get the low-hanging fruit out of the way. Oh my god, his hair looks so clean! Oh my god, he was introduced in 06, you know, the bad one. Oh my god, Sonic has had such a rough transition in the 3D! <laughs> uh, dude, you good? Sorry, I had to get the obvious jokes out of the way. Ignoring all that, this destroyed world was all that Silver the Hedgehog has known all his life. Every day he spent fighting off flames, all he wanted was the madness to end. Lucky for him, the answer came to him, in the form of uh, another three-foot-tall hedgehog. Uh, huh. Enter Mephilus the Dark. He had traveled to the future to offer Silver a solution. Kill the one who unleashed Iblis upon the world, the Iblis Trigger, if you will. And after showing him an image of another three-foot-tall blue hedgehog in a pretty sus fiery background, Silver knew what he had to do, and accepted Mephilus' offer to take him back to the past so he could fix his home. Little did he know, however, it was a trick. Of course. Why wouldn't it be? Either way, the real reason he was sent back by Mephilus was to kill Sonic the Hedgehog to make this random princess really sad and cry, releasing Iblis from inside her so he could then merge with him and become the god Solaris again. Wait, why couldn't he just kill Sonic himself? Why does he need Silver's help? Couldn't he just travel back? to where Iblis had yet to be sealed and merged with him there? Why the hell did the princess dad stick flames in his own daughter and expect her to never ever shed a single tear? It's complicated, but anyway, moving on. Uh, but- Silver eventually learned of Mephilus' true intentions and then assisted in reviving Sonic and defeating the god Solaris and creating a good future for him once and for all. And then the game ends with the timeline being reset, thus retconning the events of the entire game. But later on, Sonic Generations tells us that the game did happen. So, so which is it, Sega? I see. Well, regardless of if the game even really happened in canon or not, Silver still should theoretically be capable of everything he does here. I mean, in every story he's in, it involves him being from the future or just a time traveler. Damn, the guy can never catch a break, huh? But anyway, some random chump wouldn't be capable of any of this, but lucky for us, Silver himself is anything but. Being a Sonic character, Silver obviously is really, really fast, being able to casually break the sound barrier, and can even reach speeds that match Sonic and Shadow. He also learned the homing attack and spin dash from two hedgehogs as well, both of which allow him to attack while curled in a ball. But just curling into a ball isn't what makes him stand out amongst the cast. His main abilities are his psychokinesis, 
Psychokinesis is Silver's bread and butter and can do many different things with these powers. His main use of his powers is being able to manipulate the environment around him, turning anything in the area into an object he can use in combat. He can grab and throw whatever is near at his opponents and can catch and throw back objects so coming his way even faster than the speed they came at him. These include things like rocks, big rocks, giant rocks, bullets, missiles, etc. Not lasers, unfortunately. But if he wanted to, he could just grab his flow and hold him in place. These powers are strong enough to casually bend metal, and with his signature Meteor Smash attack, he grabs a whole ton of cars and different objects into a ball and slams them on the ground. Getting an exact measurement of this is sort of tough, considering the many different amounts of material in, and the unknown exact size of the ball, but its weight should likely be between a few dozen or a few hundred tons. Usually this move is used as a last resort, and the last time he used it, it didn't really end well for him, unfortunately. He can also condense this power and fire it as a projectile called the Psychic Knife. He can dash short distances and become temporarily intangible with his teleport dash, and even fly by picking himself up. That's not all though, as he possesses some different forms of ESP. He can fuck with your sense of direction, disorient or temporarily scramble your senses, or just paralyze you momentarily if it prefers. Or he can also use them as a flashlight. Awesome. Why though? Psychokinesis isn't all he has though. Due to his experience with the other hedgehogs, Silver has also picked up on a few chaos cards as well. While not nearly as refined as someone like Shadow, Silver is capable of doing things such as stopping or slowing down time. He can also use it to time travel, so theoretically, he could travel back in time to when his opponent was a baby and just kill him there. That's kind of screwed up, honestly, but sounds like a good tip. I know exactly what you're doing, and all I want to say is shut the fuck up. <laughs> Killjoy. Yeah, yeah, you've called me worse. Now hurry up and talk about what we're all wanting to hear. Sure. Anyways, if Silver finds himself back into a corner, he has one final trump card. His super silver form. By absorbing the power of the seven chaos emeralds, Silver can access his super form. In this form, he gets an exponential boost in strength and speed, and his granted enhanced psychokinetic abilities. He can fly without using his psychokinesis, and is nigh invincible as well. He can reach speeds matching that of supersonic. This one does have a time limit, however, but it's also pretty inconsistent. In game time, superforms last so long as a user has a steady supply of power rings. In the lore, it's implied they can go on for multiple days, but it can also be assumed that an attack strong enough to match or overwhelm Silver can knock him out of a superform. That makes enough sense, I suppose. And it was thanks to this form that Silver was able to assist in the defeat of Solaris, along with Super Sonic and Super Shadow, which segues nicely into his feats. As said earlier, Silver can react quick enough to catch bullets and missiles fired at him, and can throw them back twice as fast. That isn't very surprising, considering he can keep up with Sonic. Though he definitely isn't as fast, he shouldn't be very far behind. And Sonic himself can fight and react at faster than light speeds in base form. And his super form obviously should be much faster, possibly in the massively faster than light range. He's durable enough to take beatings from both Sonic and Shadow, and can even survive his own meteor smash falling on him. And, of course, he assisted in the defeat of Solaris. While this feat is highly debated on how powerful it is, it is impressive that Silver was even able to deal damage to Solaris at all, as Solaris literally was ending all of existence and was stated by Dr. Eggman to eat dimensions for lunch. But despite all this though, Summer still has his problems, as we all do. Like any person his age, his feelings often get the better of him. He can be naive and easy to fool, which Mephilus took advantage of. Silver can also be arrogant and overconfident in battle at times, which can lead to a loss. As well as continuous use of his psychokinesis over a long period of time can wear him down. Being caught off guard can also make Silver lose focus and disrupt his control over his powers briefly. He's sort of insecure in his own, which, big mood. And he was defeated by Infinite, who was able to defeat Sonic just earlier, before losing to him after he steps in to rescue Sonic, which further shows Sonic's superiority to him. All in all though, Silver will keep fighting on for the sake of his future, and won't stop until he can see peace at last. To kill someone to save the world. Is that really the right thing to do? All right, our analysis is complete. We've researched each characters at their best, and now it's time to answer the question. It's time to see who would come out on top in a show of fictional theory. Ha <laughs> ha! Haven't gotten to say that in forever. How'd it feel? Epic.
take this! Wait, what? Yeah, I remember this ending way differently, but that was then, this is now. While Silver could certainly hold his own in this battle, he was unfortunately outclassed in almost every single category. While Silver's array of powers certainly was useful, it was just simply outdone by the sheer variety and versatility of Ness. Silver's powers simply boiled down to psychokinesis and projectile throwing. Ness meanwhile can burn him, shock him, make him sob uncontrollably, or beat the hell out of him with his bat. Speaking of, Ness also had more options for both close and long-range combat, giving him the advantage in both scenarios. But couldn't Silver just paralyze him and win that way? Well, yeah, but Ness can do that too, and has the means to heal himself from the paralysis as well. Not to mention the absurd stat gap. If we want to be generous and say Silver is completely equal to Sonic in his prime base form, he'd be around planet level AP and durability with MFTL. Combat speed. Impressive. But, compared to Ness's universal levels of power, simply being a planet buster would not nearly be enough. Not to mention his omnipresence, which would allow him to react to anything Silver could throw at him. Silver is definitely a more skilled and experienced fighter, however, when your opponent is way stronger and way faster than you, skill doesn't really matter. However, this fight becomes trickier when we factor in Super Silver. Well, the fight would end long before Silver was able to use this form, let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he can transform in time. While Super Silver can bridge the gap in power, raw power isn't enough to defeat Ness. Ness has multiple means of healing himself, which wouldn't do any progress Silver would make on him, and has the power necessary to overwhelm him in Super form. Or he could try his luck with PSI Flash, which absolutely could one-shot Super Silver if lucky, or just use PSI Shield, which reflects damage back at the attacker. And while Silver could technically time travel and end the fight before it began, he has never shown this sort of singing in combat, and likely would choose not to do so anyways. And with Super Silver out of commission, all Ness needed was a good rockin' to take the victory. Now keep in mind, there are some specific circumstances where Silver could beat Ness, but the majority of the time, Ness simply edges out thanks to his far superior base stats, his greater speed, and more versatile set of powers. 
Man, it was no use trying for silver. When the Sonic fandom hears about this, they'll be calling BSI for sure. The winner is Ness. Um, hey, it's me, son. It's 5.05 in the morning when I'm recording this segment. I already finished, I just finished editing this, and I felt I should probably do some, like, post-commentary-ish thing. Well, there's credits on screen, I guess. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But, uh, this has been, um, like a really big passion project that I've been working on on and off since last <laughs> April, I want to say around when quarantine started i think around no 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 it was march i don't remember it was been a year but bringing this back has been something i've wanted to do for forever after i just kind of stopped uploading the old fictional fury stuff in like summer of 2018 i want to say i don't remember but um you know i've never really i've never really lost my passion for like verses and stuff and I've really been wanting to get back into it. You can ask like folks like Z Dog that I've kind of been working on this on and off since like 2017, 2018. I don't remember when I decided to redo this, but I guess we're finally at the end. It feels really cathartic. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's so surreal that like after two, three years this this finally done. And it's not like I've been, like, working super hard on it for those full years, but the fact that it took this long is kind of upsetting to me, but it doesn't matter now. We're at the end. Uh, did I mention this is unscripted? Um, yeah. Uh, I just want to give a huge, huge, big thank you to Selena for hopping on board this project with me when I brought it up on a whim last minute. <laughs> They've been super supportive. To me and they, they kind of just watched me destroy myself behind the scenes trying to get this done and i can't thank them enough <laughs> they mean so much to me they're great um i'll leave their socials in the description don't harass them for anything i may have gotten wrong or anything you disagree with if you want to attack somebody for that kind of thing just go for me don't go for them they're not involved with the research at all um I also just want to thank the many, many supportive friends I've had. You guys know who you are. You're great. And I really appreciate all of you. Um, as for the next episode, I don't really know <laughs> when I'm going to get around to that. Or when that's going to be out. But <laughs> we can, we'll see what happens. Um, I don't really have anything else left to say. Thank you for sticking around. For watching. Whatever. And yeah. <laughs> you can have... You can have your next time trailer now. Um, bye. <laughs>